So, we have an exciting guest for you this afternoon. Uh, our guest needs no introduction, so she is known around the world. She graduated from the University of Maryland School of Medicine. She went on to complete grad postgraduate studies at the University of Maryland, Harvard, and Boston University. Later, she became assistant dean at the Boston University School of Medicine and chief medical officer at DC General Hospital. She is also a homeopath, nutritionist, and enjoys energy medicine. Her expertise in water has led her around the world, exploring the use of water in Europe, Africa, Polynesia, the Caribbean, and the Orient. As a member of the prestigious Functional Water Society of North America, she has presented papers in Japan on water to over 2,000 scientists. She's on a number of health advisory boards, and yet, in spite of her busy schedule, she still finds time to help her patients understand the importance of water to their health and be here with you this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to our guest, Dr. Mona Harrison. There's a lot of information that um, we're going to try to cover in a short period of time today and to try to keep me organized so that we can get the most bang out of the buck. I will refer to some of my notes, but again, welcome. And to begin with, as we look at water, one of the features that I'm not sure you've ever reflected upon seriously is the fact that water is critical to every element of life. There's nothing on this planet, in fact, in this universe, that does not depend on water. Today, we're going to direct our activities to how, in particular, water has an impact on our bodies as humans. And perhaps to begin to evaluate it as a healthy thing that is more than just some clear liquid that is convenient and you get a thirst for, but that it has some activity. And in fact, the word bioavailability or water that's available to you as a living entity is the approach that we're going to take today. Now, if we start off and get a sense of what are these differences in water and what's in my water? I mean, to most of this audience, you at least have some elementary knowledge of water, but we're going to just start from the beginning and say, in many of the towns, including this one, but more appropriately across the United States, things are added to the water to attempt to clean it. And so for most of this century, what has happened is that they have begun to add chlorine to the water. Now, for many of you, you say, so what's wrong with that? In fact, I have a swimming pool and I have chlorine in my swimming pool and I take a shower every day. I mean, what's wrong with that? I mean, we're here in the United States and we have excellent water. And of course the government wouldn't bother us here in terms of putting something in the water that might be injurious. I say to you that this has not been a conscious attempt to make you sick or to have an impact on your cells. The problem we're faced with today is that the government doesn't know what else to use. So even as we back up for just a minute and look at these pristine rivers and streams that we have in this region and in the Pacific Northwest, we get a lot of rain, so there is a lot of water around. And we look at the beautiful Pacific River, I mean, Columbia River Basin, and say, but of course we have good water here, and we have pristine rivers, and we have a beautiful mountain here that gives off a lot of water that supplies a lot of the area. But how many of you remember about a year and a half ago, it wasn't that big in the news, but there were reports about a science class. This was a group of high school kids that decided to look at the rivers and streams as part of their science project. And in the course of that, they started running across all these little frogs with deformities. They saw so many that everybody got excited about it and it became a national issue to the point that what they were seeing, if you can imagine, were frogs with three eyes and seven legs and 
two extra organs and things missing. And you can say, so, okay, that's a frog. Wait a minute, what significance does that have to me? Number one, we found them in our little rivers and streams here in the Pacific Northwest. They also found them in the Thousand Lakes in Minnesota, which are coming off of supposedly some pretty pristine waters over the Canadian border. These were in areas where we thought at least they would have clean water. I mean, if I were in, if I had to pick a state like... Um, perhaps New Jersey, where it's been noted that the water has been bad for years, or the District of Columbia, where they don't know what in the devil they're going to do with the water there, or areas which are heavily populated, you know, we would perhaps think that maybe I'd have a little dirty water there, but even there, people don't realize just how bad their drinking water is. When I've spoken to people from the Department of Energy, one of whom I know rather closely, um, and when she came to visit out here, she came with her bottle of water. <laughs> and I said, well, you don't need to bring bottled water. This was a couple of years ago. You don't need to bring bottled water out here. We have excellent water. She says, oh, no, it doesn't work that way. Anywhere we travel in the United States, we take our bottled water. He says, are you aware that in the state of South Carolina, right at the Georgia border, that the water almost lights up and irradiates? when um, if you were to put something that would allow the radiation to show? Do you realize that here in Washington State you have the largest super fund in the United States in terms of cleaning up the water, the groundwater, as secondary to Hansford? And what took place there in the building of nuclear submarines and for a nuclear power plant? In fact, if we back up just a minute, we find that there is, since 1995, and I don't watch that much TV, but on occasion something says turn the set on. And I walked into my house one day in 1995, July of 1995, it says turn the TV on. And just at that moment, the Center for Communicable Diseases was making an announcement that I just happened to hear. It was only on for one day. So they had done their public duty to announce to the public what they wanted to say. And in that broadcast, they noted that there was no safe drinking water left in the United States. Now, people begin to say, well, I have a well. And um, I have excellent water because I don't have chlorine and fluorine in my water. Wrong. Most of the tributaries of the Columbia are in trouble. And if the frogs aren't news enough to you that there's a problem, I tell you, take another look. Now, when we look at those frogs, again, why are these frogs so important? If you begin to go into the coal mines around the world and they're worried about noxious gases or toxic gases being eliminated, the old rule was to send in a canary. The canary didn't come out. The canary died. You knew you didn't go in. Well, the frogs are comparable to those canaries when, it, when we speak of the water system. They're that sensitive to critical changes in the water enough to say to you, don't go into the water or don't drink that water. Our water is bad. And not to scare you and not to send you into a depression about it, if I said to you that the United States did not have enough money to meet the needs to change the water system, the onus then comes on us in individual families to decide what, I, what am I going to do for my family? What am I going to do to make sure that my water is tolerable? When I think of little babies, and I know that these babies are totally dependent upon what I feed them and what I give them to drink for their life. And if you, you come from that perspective, you get a sense of the responsibility you have for your family in terms of knowing and understanding what's in your water and what you can do about it. Now, we've created a pretty grim picture here but to say that there are things that can change your water and make it more healthy, make it so that your body can absorb it and use it and help you to become healthy, that's what we're about today. So let's take a closer look at